Hey folks, my name is David. I'm a pastor from the United States living here in Bonn. Like most of you, I've been in social isolation for the past few weeks. It can be hard to stay grounded in these difficult times, especially if you're far away from home, in a place where the language that is spoken is different than your mother tongue, where the culture and social expectations are vastly different from your own, where the distance between you and the people you know and love most deeply is growing farther and farther every day. Yeah, it's hard to stay grounded. The days, the weeks, they're starting to blur together. It can be hard to find hope, to believe that you are not alone, to remember your purpose and stay true to the goals that brought you here. That's why several of us in the Master of Ecumenical Studies program at the university here in Bonn have decided to get together and offer some online spiritual reflections uh, during Holy Week in the coming days. We're calling it Tenebrae to Go, not because we are especially dedicated to making Good Friday even longer than it already was, but because it's catchy, and also because it reminds us of what it is like to walk with Jesus as he shares with us his seven last words on the way to the cross, and eventually on to the tomb and on to resurrection. So as we get started, I would like for us to begin our journey together by praying together a psalm a psalm that was a prayer for deliverance that Jesus himself would likely have known and would have been close to his heart. So will you pray with me the words of Psalm 31? In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me, rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Blessed be the Lord, for God has wondrously shown God's steadfast love to me when I was beset as a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am cut off from your sight, but you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Amen. Unless you're one of the heroic fro folks on the front line of this uh, pandemic, you probably found yourself with some unexpected free time over the past few days and maybe even the past few weeks. I wonder, how have you been using that time? Have you uh, finally started reading that book you had on the nightstand since January? Have you maybe found a new way to build relationships with friends and loved ones that had grown stale over time? Perhaps you're even figuring out how to use these new and awesome things that have really always been around, video conferencing apps. I don't know if you're the kind of person who's really into prayer or not, but you've probably also had a lot of time to do that, too. I wonder, truthfully, what have your prayers been like? Or maybe what would they be like if you were the kind of person who really liked to pray? I thought I would have a lot more time to pray myself, being locked here alone in my vigay. In reality, this whole coronavirus pandemic has really taught me one thing more than anything else. I would have been a terrible monk. I used to wonder, if I were given the opportunity to sit alone in a hovel for a couple of months, would I have a profound spiritual experience? Would I grow in my own spirituality? Well, unless profound boredom is profoundly spiritual, the answer, at least for me, and I can only speak for myself, is no. Probably not. If I were better at this, I might be able to have some profound prayers to offer you from my hobble. In truth, however, I'm not really even sure what to pray for during this difficult time. And that's a scary feeling, especially for someone who's supposed to be a pastor. Like most people, I generally assume that earnest prayers are confident prayers. That for a prayer to be genuine, to be real, to be convicted, it must be confident, maybe even self-assured. That might be true. 
but I'm just not sure if I can pr pray like that right now. Can you relate to that at all? It's hard for me to pray for much of anything with confidence right now. Frankly, it's hard for me to be confident in much of anything right now, at least anything that was built by human hands. Our healthcare system, not so much. Financial plans, certainly not. Relationships and institutions, time will tell, but who really knows? Maybe you're having a hard time figuring out how to pray as well. It might be hard for you to see a light at the end of this ever-increasingly long tunnel. It might be difficult for you to figure out how in the world God is going to make a way out of no way. Emotional apathy and phony fortitude might be all that you can manage right now. Confidence, assurance, seems like a distant memory. It's safe to say that confident prayers sound the most profound. But I'm starting to think that maybe the most holy prayers are those that reek of desperation. Prayers offered in haste behind the glass of an operating room. Please, God, I don't know if you're there, but if you are, help him, save him, I need him. Prayers on the way home from the grocery store. Please, God, don't let me bring this virus back to my kids. Prayers said in your dorm room alone at night. God, I have to know. Does anyone back home care if I live or if I die? These profoundly simple prayers might be the most profound of all. The truth is, now that I think of it, the psalm we just read a few moments ago together didn't really start off very confident either. And Jesus' road to the cross, at least in the beginning, was not one that inspired confidence. It seems to me that the whole impulse beside the, behind the psalm that we read today is simple. And it can be summed up in its final word, at least the final word that we read. Help. Help me, Lord. Rescue me. Deliver me from my time of trouble. Keep me safe. Come quickly. Help. 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 You might be lonely right now. You might feel like there is no one there to help you. You might be lonely, but you're not alone. God is with you. We are with you. We're all having a hard time figuring out how to navigate these challenges together. None of us really know what we're going through right now and how we're going to get to the end of it. The only good news I can find in all of this is that the God who is revealed to us on the way to the cross and eventually to the tomb is a God who knows what we are experiencing. It is a God who took on flesh in, human, in, in the human being who is Jesus, a God who walked in our shoes, who knew what it was like to fear sickness and death. The road to the cross was a road of brokenness, defeat, and desperation. It was a road of isolation and searching. It was a road on which the profound prayers were exposed as pompous, and the simple prayers were exposed as holy. So whatever you're feeling, remember this. You are not alone. Don't be afraid to reach out to someone for help. Don't be afraid to reach out to that friend, your loved one, who might need you. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask somebody to walk with you through this difficult time, even if they can't walk with you in person. And maybe, if you feel like it's the right time for you, don't hesitate to reach out to God. Because whatever you think of who God is, the truth of Scripture is this. God knows what it's like to walk in your shoes. God has been a human being too. God suffered defeat, suffered loss, suffered pain. God is with us, and with God, we will get through. Will you pray with me? Lord, your people are hurting. Help. Amen. Now, friends, receive this benediction. Stay home. 
Stay safe. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Amen.